Red Day for Guild Wars. In this video, I'm going to be covering what are all the primary troops you want to be looking at, what are the classes you want to be looking at, what are the weapons you want to consider using. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little breakdown of how they interact with each other and the best ways to mix them up. So let's jump on in and talk some Red Day Guild Wars. Ah, red troops, you beautiful bastards. So if we're going to talk about red troops, we have to talk about Infernus. So Infernus, of course, is doing damage to a bunch of people and he's exploding the board. So what's coming with Infernus is lots of loot potential. On Red Day, this is especially good because this means if you kill anybody, there's going to be a firestorm. So this is going to help him loop into himself. And it also creates burning mechanics, which works wonders with a lot of good classes with access to the Fireblade. So for this reason, Infernus is absolutely on the list. Next, we're going to jump to his uh, bigger, beefier brother here, Obsidious. So Obsidious, of course, is doing heavy splash damage to people, so he acts very infernus like where he's breaking up the board in some capacity, so in this case you're destroying, so you're getting a lot of mana for this, and doing heavy damage on top of it. There's a chance he does some even more damage on top of that. So overall, damage output is very nice, the mana generation is also nice. The funny thing about this is it creates a dust storm when an enemy dies, so opposite to Infernus, this is creating a dust storm. As a fun tip, if you run them both on the same team, whoever is lowest on your uh, roster is the storm that's going to win when an enemy dies. So if you have Obsidious below Infernus, a dust storm wins. If you have Infernus below Obsidious, then Infernus wins. So keep that in mind if you're ever trying to put them together. However, Obsidious also brings some frontline potential if you're able to manage that um, by having 50% skull reduction and has the oh-so-important stun trait when it comes to Guild Wars. So Obsidious, incredibly useful troop, absolutely amazing, 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 amazing. The next one is going to be Gimlet, so as far as an empowered converter goes, he's one of the better ones, so he's immune to a lot of stuff and of course he starts with full mana, but then he's also making your frontline troop turn into this like super tank kind of guy. So it gives them life and then it also enrages them, or raging them makes them do extra skull damage as well as ignoring traits. So super useful. Gimlet absolutely on the list. And then after Gimlet, we're going to talk about my best boy here, Mr. Anime Man, Voice of Orpheus. So Voice of Orpheus is also immune to a lot of things and then he's cleansing everybody. So when it comes to Guild Wars, cleanse is extremely important. Status effects is kind of what makes or breaks a Guild Wars fight. You know, if both teams just have no ability to do debuffs or buffs, then you're just doing straight damage. Uh, you know, teams don't really work that way. If you debuff the other team, you're going to put yourself in an advantage. So being able to cleanse yourself is going to help you survive a lot of those opening Frost Mage attacks, for instance, where you'll just get frozen at the start, or if you're fighting a Sun Spear, you'll get frozen and tangled at the start. Having access to cleanse constantly is extremely effective. And it's really hard to turn it off since he's impervious. So from a Guild Wars point of view, Voice of Orpheus, super, super high value. He also has a castable cleanse on top of being able to give other people mana and doing a lot of damage. So Guild Wars value for Voice of Orpheus off the charts. He's my bae. Voice of Orpheus, absolutely in the list. Next is Quillen, because Quillen is cool for a couple reasons. One of which is that he's red and he's also converting stuff into red. So he feeds into himself, which is fun. And then he's blessing people, which is an extremely strong, again, from a cleanse point of view, extremely strong buff to put on yourself, because not only does it cleanse you, but then it also protects you from debuffs going forward. On top of that, all allies are gaining magic every 4 or 5 match. So this is absolutely really awesome as well. And uh, he does start with a light storm, which fortunately, most of these troops in this red list also have yellow. So if this is a thing where you have no other storms coming into effect. Uh, this storm will actually be useful to you as well. So skull damage, super fun. Again, if you're running Fireblade kind of classes, having the ability to create skulls is super fun. So Quillen, absolutely on the list as far as red troops are concerned. Next is going to be defensive boy, or woman, I should say, uh, in Divinia. So Divinia, if you're not familiar, is giving you lots of mana generation here. So it's also cleansing and then giving life. So as far as defensive utility goes, cleansing everybody on your team, creating lots of mana, and giving life to everybody, incredibly strong spell effect. On top of that, 
They also cause a random status effect on every four or five. So there's times where you'll just randomly bless yourself or randomly barrier yourself. If you have a very, very loop heavy lineup, Divinia is going to enable you to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So Divinia, absolutely super high value, must use. Tina, next on the list here, is going to be your all out offensive juggernaut. So damage wise, this amount of damage in a Guild Wars scenario is usually enough to kill people if they get hit twice. Uh, in really high levels, you might need to hit three times to get them, especially if they're running spell armor. So in terms of damage output, if you can build lineups that just loop into Tina a lot, you can just punch people down super, super fast. So Tina is super high value. As far as survivability goes, they're also extremely strong from a Guild Wars point of view. Spell resistance is super duper high. And if for whatever reason they are at the top of your troop list, they are going to hit like a maniac. So from a Guild Wars point of view, the damage output from Tina, this is kind of a sweet spot where if you get the higher damage potential out of this, you're going to kill in two shots almost certainly. Even if you get the lower damage potential out of this, you're definitely going to kill in three shots and still maybe two. So Tina is somebody you can absolutely build around on a Guild Wars Red Day. And then lastly, maybe a little less conventional, we're going to go with Alchemist here. So what's kind of cool about Alchemist is that they're getting bonus red, so you're already on a red day. So having bonus red is going to help out your team. Beyond all of that, they also can transform a selected mana color to yellow. So this is going to enable you to almost guarantee you're going to loop every single time you cast Alchemist. And as I mentioned before, most of the troops on this list also take yellow. So Alchemist, super super great. From a weapons point of view, we are going to be looking at the Jack-O-Lantern. Who saw that coming? So Jack-O-Lantern is kind of a fun little weapon, but we use it less for the status effects and more for the explode. So on Red Day, you'll find that there's it's really hard to run weapons on Red Day. A lot of the red weapons are not really loop oriented. So Jack-O-Lantern just happens to be one of them that is loop oriented and it potentially just starts hitting people with all kinds of debuffs, which is super duper fun. This explosion isn't a super amount and you do have to take note that it's exploding a gem of their color. So if you target a specific troop and they only have uh, yellow and brown, for instance, and there's hardly any yellow or brown on the board, that can work for or against you in the sense that you'll know exactly where the explosions are going to be, but they might be positioned in really bad places where the explosion is not going to help you. So definitely pay attention to where the gems are and who you're targeting with this. But Jack-O-Lantern is an absolutely viable looping weapon that you can use. It's also useful for targeting specific troops that are especially dangerous that you might want to entangle or silence. Anything like that, Jack-O-Lantern can help you out there. From an upgrade point of view, there's really nothing interesting about it admittedly pretty much at all, but it does burn the first enemy, so that's kind of fun. Uh, beyond all of that, we get to talk about the Doom Crossbow. So Doom Crossbow, Doom Weapon, tons of damage of course to all, but then it also converts into Doom Skulls. What's fun about this on top of that is that it doesn't have any failure condition. So the a couple of the Doom Weapons are basically creating a gem that can break up your Doom Skull explosion situation. However, this one's just creating another Doom Skull. So it's a very safe Doom weapon. If you have alignment when you cast it, you're still going to have alignment no matter what. And then it also creates a Firestorm on top of that. Since it's Red Day, this is also especially useful. So from a Red Day weapon point of view, super, super great. And then we will talk about a couple classes and a few classes, actually. Of course, since this is my video, you know this is coming, but Sunspear, absolutely amazing from a red day point of view. Firestorm every single turn, which is amazing. You gain one attack for every red ally, which is fairly useless, but at least you'll get full benefit out of this. On top of that, you're getting a Snap Freeze, which is amazing in a PvP context. This is a great opener. It allows you to get some loops off yourself without having to worry so much about getting looped on. Super fun. Immunity to Frozen, always welcome. And Entangle Start, also super strong. So just like from level 1 to 10, we're already dealing with some awesome stuff. Beyond all of that, you get a little defensive utility here with Submerge, which is pretty fun on 4 or 5s. And then we also get more bonus red mana out of this. So this is kind of fun. We have Firestorm every single turn and bonus red mana. And then on top of that, we also get access to Fireblade, which will do triple skull damage. So if you are looking at a Sunspear team, Infernus will almost certainly be on that team. 
So Sunspear, super amazing from a Red Guild Wars Day perspective. Next, of course, is going to be Titan. I'm sure you all know why Titan is great, but they themselves will get a 50% mana start. Super fun. And they also are inflicting stun when someone tries to hit you, so if you're up against a team like a web spinner in the top slot, for instance, this is going to stun them after the first time they hit you. If they hit you while you're barriered, this will also make them get stunned anyway. And then they're basically just a little limp fish trying to tap you, which does nothing. So stun, super important to have if you're running in a top slot as far as Guild Wars is concerned. Counterattack, not that useful. Stone Circle, not that useful. Storm Aura, you can either click this on or off depending on what you want to be doing. However, Rock Solid is always going to be a great trait to have. It's going to give you barriers on brown, super useful. And then Lightning Strike, of course, is extremely great from a Guild Wars point of view, or just in general. This is going to help you loop more often, so this is really great. And then on top of all of that, we get to be immune to everything, which is super neato. So Titan, of course, a staple of all teams in general. If you're building teams in this game, you're almost certainly using Dragon, not Dragon Guard, uh, Titan all the time. But speaking of, we're going to look at Dragon Guard next. So what's fun about Dragon Guard versus Sunspear is that they play kind of similarly, but they have very different functionality. So Dragon Guard here is getting skull reduction in the top slot, which is great. And then they also have this ability to magic and life pump themselves here, or any other dragons you might potentially be running. Like a World Breaker might be something you could be using on Guild Wars Red Day, for instance. I would not recommend Dragon Soul, for instance, just because they are not really uh, getting boosted in any capacity. Elamogram I'm not the biggest fan of. So as far as dragons are concerned, like World Breaker is probably the only other one you would consider on a Guild Wars Day. However, Infernus is still extremely good to use on this class because, again, we have access to Fireblade. So, super great to run with Dragon Guard as well. The thing that Dragon Guard's bringing that Sunspear doesn't is access to Banishment. So, this is going to dispel all enemies on 4 5. So, imagine you're fighting a life and death team. You'll probably have better success running against them with a Dragon Guard than you would with a Sunspear. A Sunspear would have a really hard time burning the life and death hero themselves, whereas a Dragon Guard should be able to readily get them no longer blessed and then just smashing them through while they're burning. Super fun. Again, they get some little frontline utility here. They can get a Firestorm at the start of the battle as well. If you're running it within Furnace, for instance, you're also going to have like a Firestorm more or less like constantly, so that's kind of fun. And then you get a barrier to kick things off, and uh, you know, that's kind of it as far as all that stuff's concerned. So Dragon Guard, also an extremely useful class. So now let's talk about some of the troop interactions that we're talking about here. How can we kind of mix these troops together? What troops kind of fit well together? Let's talk about that. So now that we can have all of these things on the screen at the same time, you can kind of see how all of this stuff basically works together pretty much in any combination that you want. So obviously if you're running Infernus, you're going to be running that with the Dragon Guard or a Sun Spear. The main reason you'd want to be using Infernus with those classes is for the Fireblade talent that we talked about at level 100. So if you have Fireblade going on, Quillen is a very natural partner with this, so that way you can force Skulls onto the board. Super effective for just smashing people down once you got them burning. Super great and amazing. Alchemist also fits nicely in that lineup because of course Alchemist is going to create even more yellow, so Infernus is going to get the yellows out of that. Plus all the reds are going to be getting from the Firestorms they're going to be brewing around. So Alchemist and Furnace, super great combination. When we look at the next two, we've got Tina and Gimlet. Those two go nicely together, of course, as Gimlet's going to be making lots of browns for Gimlet. Uh, greens are also not really used by pretty much anybody, and the nice thing is that the only person in this list that actually takes greens is also Tina. So you're just converting one mana that Tina takes into another mana that Tina takes. So Gimlet's super effective with Tina. Gimlet is also partnered up very nicely with Obsidious for a similar reason. Obsidious doesn't care about greens at all, but of course can take advantage of the browns that you're going to be making. So those two partner up super nice. And then when you have a choice of Voice of Orpheus or Divinia here, the nice thing is that they both offer cleanse and utility. So Divinia is going to help you with mana generation, just getting the board exploding and looping. However, Voice of Orpheus is someone that you more generally leave passively in a bottom slot just so you can constantly be cleansing everything in there. So my advice to you would be figure out which damage dealing troops you want to deal with, whether that's Quillen or Obsidious or Tina or Infernus, and then figure out how you can get the mana using the troops that are available in the screen here. 
Obviously from a class point of view, I would generally say that Sunspear is the best. Dragon Guard would also be a secondary to Sunspear. And Titan, of course, if you just don't have either of those to 100 and you're just looking for a little extra protection, Titan in the top slot is always a good idea. But for Red Day, it is pretty much where the Sunspear and Dragon Guard shine the most. So these troops are the best, these weapons are the most useful, these classes are certainly dominant. Make sure when you're dealing with Guild Wars Red Day, this is the list of things that you're thinking about. So that is all, and this is Keylime signing off. Thank <laughs> you.